Okay, in this section right here, we're going to be talking about how we can configure PHP to work with Apache Server. But first thing, Kristen, go ahead and give us your homework assignment. Um, well, PHP originally meant personal homepage, but now it means PHP. Oh, sure. Hypertext, Hypertext. preprocessor. Yes. Don't start stealing That's my That's very spotlight. good, Adam. Oh, you're welcome. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that's what we needed to know. So uh, I'm just trying to help you out. I'm in this section right here, what we're going to do is go ahead and get the two configured to work together. So as I pointed out at the end of the last section, there is an install.txt file. So we can go ahead and open that up. And we don't want to open it up in that. Let's go ahead and open it up in Notepad. It's already set up to fit our screen here. And uh, as I said in the last section, there's a bunch of really good information. But if you come and scroll down, let's see, installation windows, information, information, look for web server configuration, okay? And if we go down just a little bit further, you're going to find installing PHP on Windows with Apache 1.3.x, which is what we're currently running, right, Logan? Exactly. So um, some good information here. First thing it's going to tell you is that there's two different ways that you can set up PHP to work with Apache on Windows. And one way is through CGI binary, okay, which is using the PHP.exe file, and the other one is module base, which is using the uh, as a PHP uh, DLL file that'll get called by Apache, okay. And any anything you want to add to that, Logan? Not really. It's <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> That's it's just one of two methods that you can use, right? Right. And the method that is preferred is the S or server API module, okay, which is using that DLL. It's the second method of the two that I talked about just a second ago. And if we want to set it up this way, there's a couple of things that we have to do, right? Right. So first thing is we've got to add a few things to our config file, right, for the Apache? Yes, we've got to tell, like, tell Apache where PHP is and right. how you're using it. And which module it is, et right. cetera. So here's this information right here. So we've got this, and we also have to copy the PHP engine or the DLL over to the Windows System 32 folder, right? Right, because that's where it's going to look for it. Absolutely. So let's see. What do you want to do first? I it's just, up to I you. I would just copy the DLL folder because we we just gotten the files on our hard drive, so now we'll put them in the right place. So let's okay. copy the, the PHP DLL over to the System folder. Okay, so right here is to do this. You should move the PHP for TS.DLL to the Windows System um, that's, of course, if you're running Windows 9X or ME, or over to the WinNT System32, which is what we're doing because we are running 2000. So PHP 4TS DLL. So let's go ahead and come back in here, and let's look for that file. And there it is right there. So I'll go ahead and right-click. We'll copy it, and I will come over to my – I know this is off screen. That's okay. I'm digging down to my Windows NT. Now we'll go ahead and pull this down now. Just didn't want to show you guys all my folder structure and all my files and all that good stuff. And we're looking for system32, and there it is. And so we'll just paste the file in here like the instructions say. And just overwrite if there's any older uh, PHP uh, 4TS.DLL files that may exist. So that's all we want to do there. Now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and... We'll open that install file back up. We want to go ahead and add these lines right here into our config file for Apache. So I'll just simply highlight them, and we'll copy. And I still have the httpd.config file open. And if you don't remember where that is, remember you can just go up under Program Files, Apache Group, Apache, and Config, and there you go. And there are definitely different places in here where you can add each of the three lines but, you know, for speed, we're just going to jump on down here to the bottom and simply paste those three lines in there. That won't cause any problems, will it, Logan? No, that'll, that'll work just fine. If you want to spend time and find the exact lines for each of those to keep the file looking a little cleaner, you can, but this will work just fine. The way it's organized is just for readability. Uh, you can put the lines anywhere you want, and it'll still read it in fine. And uh, the only thing we really need to change on these lines is this C drive right here because we didn't unzip everything to C drive. We actually unzipped it to K drive, right? Right. So we'll just go ahead and change that over to a K. And remember how we renamed the PHP, blah, 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 the, the big long name that the folder uh, was originally created as. We named it to just simply PHP. So all of this is good, right? Right. So let's go ahead and save this. 
Now, to actually see this work, what do we need to do? Restart, restart, Apache. restart the server. So we'll go ahead and restart it again. There it goes. Now uh, we can write a simple little PHP file to verify that this is working. Okay. I mean, obviously, you put PHP on your system. You want to make sure that it works, right? Right. You've configured it and everything. So to do this, let's go ahead and just close this out here. I'm going to come over here, open up Notepad, and I'm writing another, basically it's going to be like a HTML page, except this time instead of having an HTM or HTML extension at the end, it's going to have a .php extension. And I'm just going to use a little, so we'll just use that, and we're going to say PHP info, and let's go ahead and throw Terminator in here as well. And we're going to get into talking about functions and the things that are built into PHP uh, shortly. But this is all I want at the moment. So we'll go ahead and do a file, save as. And let's go ahead. We're, we're still up under our K drive. Uh, let's go ahead and jump up under the web root. And we'll save this as, we can save it anything we want. Let's just call it test.php. Okay. And we'll hit save. Close this out. Let's go ahead and open our browser back up. And let's just move this on up here. And let's go to localhost forward slash test dot php. And if you have done everything right and everything is configured right, you will get this page as opposed to what I just wrote a second ago. That PHP info function that we just call, now don't, just relax when I say function. I know for those of you out there that aren't programmers and you're going to be thinking function, what's he talking about? Um, We'll get to that shortly. That function is what was responsible for generating this entire page right here, which sends us back a ton of information about our system, about PHP, about Apache, about MySQL, about just about everything, right? Just about everything involved with running PHP. Environment variables. I mean, we've got everything. Anything you want to add about this, Logan, other than this is the most this is the quickest way of determining if you've got it configured properly. <laughs> well, that's his first use. The second is if you're if you're trying to figure out like um, if you have some configura configuration issue with it, you can use it to find some of the some of the stuff that would be in the PHP any file. It's a little easier to read in this format. Uh, also, you can get certain um, certain variables. We'll talk about those later. But certain settings that you may need useful information. Absolutely. Like. like <laughs> like uh, the the machine's address that it's running on, maybe the uh, the who say say the browser, the the user that called your page. You can use this to find like what their IP address was. All right. Find information also find information about the who's calling the page as well as what's running on the server. Okay, super. So um, so anyways, just uh, basically make that real quick script to test it out. That's it for configuring. Oh wow. I mean, is that really that hard? Oh, that, that's, that's actually pretty not easy. Hard at all. Basically, all I did was I copied a file, the PHP engine, if you will, the DLL, right. over to my WinNT System32 folder. Then I went into my HTTPD um, dot config file, and I added those three lines, and I told it where it could find my PHP folder at, which in my case is on K drive up under PHP. Okay. Then I restarted the server. And then I wrote a real quick script, which let's take a look at that one last time. Go ahead and come in here, again, back up under the web root. And here it is, test.php. And I'll just open it up in Notepad. It was simply start of a script, call the function php info into script. And then we named the actual file test.php. The important thing is that we actually named it with .php at the end so that when we opened our browser and we said, give us this file, the browser said, oh, this file has a .php extension on the end, and it's going to pass PHP stuff off over to the parser and let the PHP engine do everything for us, Okay, which gave us that page back. All right. So that's all that's involved in getting PHP running with Apache. Wow. All right. That's it. Thanks.